As we all get older, it gets easier and easier to say that back in my day, things were a lot better. Of course, back in your day, there was also polio, so how's that feel? In most cases, things that last only improve with time, and it's your fond memories of those things combined with the nostalgia for being a child that makes them seem so great. But if there's one thing that my big adult brain thinks has gotten worse over time, it's fast food toys. You know, there was a time when playing video games was what made people think I was lame. The concept of the kids meal toy is honestly pretty genius. Sure, plenty of kids will beg for fast food because they just like having their insides melted, but if you slap a plastic abomination in the box, that's how you really get them. But I'm a video game boy, why don't they have anything that appeals to me? Oh f Video game based kids meal toys. What a concept. When I was a kid, toys based on video games felt uncommon enough, but now I get them with my heart attack? I'm obviously biased as all hell, but I always felt like the video game tie-ins were the absolute coolest these toys had to offer. And nowadays, Arby's gives you discs. Come on, what the hell is this? A non-posable figure would still be better. Another chicken strip would be better. The only thing that could make these worse is if you only got one disc per meal. Some people collect these things and I question if they have the stomach to ask the cashier, yo, you got any Amy feet left? These are pretty pathetic excuses for toys and I pity any child who just got his seventh Eggman torso, god damn it! I at least have confidence that they used to be better than this and I collected quite a few of them over the years, so I thought it would be a fun trip down memory lane to check out the ones I still have and see if they were actually any good or if I'm just as guilty as all the other nostalgia blinded folks. After scouring my closet and bed sheets for all the toys I could find, I ended up with three distinct groups. The portable systems, the Mario toys, and the Pokemon toys. Let's start, I don't know, here. Within the portable systems, we have three subgroups, Sony, Sega, and Sports. This will be on the test. Why don't we kick things off with everyone's favorite lovable blue scamp, Sonic. Oh, it's dead. Yeah, I can't say I'm shocked to see that a lot of these things didn't survive. I mean, how would you like it if I locked you in a box for 16 years? I wonder why people don't come over anymore. Surprisingly enough though, this Sonic one still works, even though I remember playing it more and it's a year older. Strangely, it's a game about Sonic racing in a car, but it came eight years after Sonic Drift 2 and seven before All-Stars Racing. Seeing as it only has two buttons, it's pretty simple. Just move left and right avoiding cars and the speed will increase after every 30. Take note of a possible running theme. Hint, hint. A moment of silence, please, for Amy and Rouge Volleyball, Tails Sky Patrol, Cream's Flower Catch, and Shadow Hockey. This was easily my biggest pile of duds. I honestly couldn't believe how many were dead. Especially since some of them still make noise, but just have nothing on the screen. And just so the universe can have a laugh at me, I have two copies of the Knuckles game. One that's in pristine condition, but doesn't work, and one that looks like my dog got the screen, but still plays fine. I actually kind of like this one. You guide Knuckles left and right, but you can only get to platforms that are right next to you, so you have to move back and forth across them to get to the emerald. Look, I know it's nothing crazy, but honestly, I'll take anything that actually fits the characters. You may have noticed that all of these are Sonic toys, so why is it the Sega section and not the Sonic section? The answer to that is obscurity. Literally every toy in this Happy Meal wave was based on Sonic, and then Billy Hatcher was there too. And you know what? He's probably the best one here. It's another dodge the waves of stuff game like the Sonic Drift one, but it's the only one I played that actually has things to avoid and things to collect. I do wish the obstacles were actual things and not just obstacles, but I'll take what I can get. Good job, egg boy. Now back into the box with you. Then we've got the sports ones, and let's just be real, I doubt any of us really care about sports this much, so I'll make it quick. Rest in peace yellow digi sports thing and the two basketball ones. Their absence leaves us with four, and literally all of them are dodge the waves of stuff games. It's almost most motivating, like imagine being this successful while still being this lazy. The Tony Hawk game is notable for being the only one that's either broken or a blatant cheater since the stuff on the ground you're rolling towards sometimes just stops halfway down the screen and then suddenly hits you. Meanwhile, the other Digisports one is notable for doing this when I turn it on. Holy sh why? And the last two are the best ones purely because of their shells. If you couldn't tell by how severely my hands dwarf these things, they are small, and I appreciate this one having bigger buttons. The game itself isn't anything special though, it's a carbon copy of the Sonic Drift one but you dodge other football players instead of cars. You know, now that I think about it, I kinda wish they'd been even lazier because reusing the cars in this one would have been hilarious. And the football game speaks for itself. It's just cool that it looks and feels like a football as you move back and forth catching pass after pass. Alright, now that all you pussy ass sports fans got your fill, it's time for the adult to talk. There's a Crash Bandicoot one! And it's automatically way cooler than the previous ones because it's got multiplayer. It reminds me a lot of the Game & Watch game I took a look at in the Punch-Out episode, in the sense that it's a simple as hell black and white game that, despite being from a series known for being single player, offers multiplayer. The name of the game is just moving back and forth and trying to trick your opponent into moving where they can be hit by your shots, hitting them four times to win. Hey, you wanna come over and play the Crash Bandicoot Happy Meal toy with me? Happy Meal toy? Are you f***ing seven? I have a wife and kids, Wade. I can't just sit and f*** around with a toy. 
the uh, the multiplayer didn't work. Whoa, it's Spyro, and it's broken. Son of a bitch. If the rules paper is anything to go off of, it was a 2D side-scroller where you just move up and down collecting gems and lightning-blasting enemies. I'm sure it was riveting, but take a look at this. What the hell is this, a kickstand? It doesn't exactly stand up in a way that lets you play it. Let me check the rules. Ensure the back panel allows ample light to be reflected. Holy sh**. Alrighty then. I guess I'm shoving a light up this thing's ass. Let me be real with you. This game is pretty sweet. Not only is it just baffling to me that they would make a kid's meal toy that requires this of me, but it's a super unique concept. It's like a dungeon crawling game where you go down endless corridors occasionally finding treasures and enemies that you have to pick up or torch respectively. I won't spend too long on it because I'm sure it's damn near impossible to tell what's going on through a camera if you've never played it yourself, but this was a monstrously interesting diamond in the rough. All in all, the sports toys were boring, the Sonic toys were alright, Billy Hatcher was pretty cool, and Crash and Spyro were pleasant surprises. But now it's time to move away from the portable systems and check out the Pokemon toys. Non-Nintendo fans and epileptics beware. It's a light-up Magnemite on a fake Game Boy Color. This whole set is made up of little GBC replicas, and I seem to have five of them. If you think about it, the console these are based off of is already a small little handheld, so you'd think it wouldn't mean anything to me to see even smaller versions of them. But I'm a Nintendo fan, so oh my god, I love these. As expected, they're simplicity incarnate, but I don't care, man, they're so creative. Well, at least Scyther and Magnemite are. For some reason, both Igglybuff and Sentret just try to hypnotize me. Meanwhile, Magnemite actually lights up, and Scyther's a fully modeled little toy that flaps his wings and arms around inside. I also have Quilava, in fact he's the only one I found a duplicate of, but I have no idea what he's supposed to do. Judging by the little arms inside and the gap in the top, I guess it's supposed to fire something out when you press the button, but it doesn't work with mints so I'm screwed. Probably the best little detail of all is that each of them came with a little cartridge and they actually have to be inside for the toy to function. You might say, isn't that a bad thing Wade? I mean you clearly lost three of them so you just have to constantly move the cartridges around from toy to toy, and to that I say, get off my ass, Jesus Christ, I'm just trying to have fun. In regards to random assorted toys, I probably have an ass load that I just couldn't find, but these four I did. The odd one out is easily the compass. To be honest, I kinda thought there was more to this that I just couldn't remember, but apparently not. Well, here are some fun facts at least. All the info here is still accurate, I suppose they really had no reason to change any of it, and these two vital statistics are actually just its Pokedex entries from Gold and Silver. Other than that, it's a compass. If I was in a situation where I needed one of these, I'd trust Lugia. Not sure I'd trust Wendy's though. On the same front, I questioned my ability to trust the bowel evacuation station known as Burger King with my trading cards. What you see is what you get with this one. It's a deck box with some promo cards in it. I mean, it's a pretty cool box, I guess, but I sleeve my cards because I'm not a foul homunculus, so it just became a lot less useful. Somehow still more useful than this Piplup though. Here's a rundown of all of its features. You can slide a card between the back parts. I expected more of this penguin. And last but not least, we have Reshiram, and hell yeah, he's awesome. I mean, this is basically just a full quality action figure. It's decently big, pretty much all of its limbs are articulated. This is about as much of a home run as I could reasonably ask for with my McNuggets. But before we move on to Pasta Boy, there's one more Pokemon line to check out. And it's easily the most iconic fast food toy line of all time. What a title, right? Behold! Five Pokemon cards made of real 23 karat gold, alongside their respective certificates of authenticity signed by former Nintendo of America chairman Howard Lincoln. These are the coolest to own, it's just so baffling that they exist. It's also baffling how awful my family apparently treated these things. There were six of them in the line, and yet I have seven Pokeballs, five cards, four sets of stands, and four certificates. There's absolutely no way we got rid of any of them, which means these missing pieces are just floating around my place somewhere just waiting to be found. We suggest that it remain in the clear cover in which it was delivered. Fingerprints and exposure will cause the superb finish to tarnish. <laughs> oh, good thing we listened. You could argue these things aren't even toys, but I felt this episode would be entirely incomplete without them. So Pokemon generally killed it with the fast food toys, but how did everyone's favorite fat mustachioed plumber do? He might have been even better. While the gold Pokemon are legendary in the world of fast food toys as a whole, these are legendary to me. I can't even tell you how much I love these stupid little toys. Seeing them again invoked powerful levels of nostalgia within me. But with that nostalgia came a little heartbreak, so let's get that out of the way first. This one was a neat idea. Basically, you'd wind up the green knob on the side, and when you let it go, the track would move towards Mario, so you could move him back and forth as if you were avoiding the obstacles. Super dumb and super simple, but I was so glad to see it still worked and then it never worked again. My memory is not good enough to recall if we used to have problems with this one, or if it's been fine for years and I just didn't get to record its last hurrah, but it made me far sadder than it had any right to. This Yoshi is equally rough, but I don't really remember what its purpose even was. I think he's just meant to grab onto your backpack strap or something and play a little jingle when you press the shell, and I mean, it kinda still works. 
Meanwhile, this other Yoshi is pretty much good as new. It's your standard launching car, but it is a neat idea that the launcher is a Wii wheel and can actually slightly change the direction he goes. This Diddy Kong is the same idea, but you instead wind up his arms before firing and just letting him go ape shit. Returning to complete simplicity, we have Mario Ball. God, I've been waiting for the day that this was scientifically possible. Aside from having a flatter side that you can set him down on, he's just Mario as a rubber ball. Sick. Oh, we have another Reshiram situation, because this Double Dash toy is just an awesome figure on its own. It's nowhere near as high quality or articulated as the Pokémon, but I always thought it was so awesome that the wheels actually move as though they have shock absorbers. This Chain Chomp one is basically just another pullback toy, but with a suction cup that makes it so it'll keep going in circles. And of course, it wouldn't stick to my goddamn table, so I had to try to hold it down myself. It's a neat idea, I guess. Before we get to our final stop on this journey, this thing. It was actually what inspired me to tackle this topic, and yet I forgot to include it with all the rest. In a nutshell, there's a magnet inside that's controlled by the spinner on the back, which moves the four cars around the track as if they're racing. This toy is the ultimate proof that creativity matters above all else. At the end of the day, I'm spinning a tiny disc and watching the little plastic cars go around a puny circle track, but the fact that they went that extra step and gave kids a little magnet contraption to do it means a lot to me. It shows that they at least cared a little. And yet, that still doesn't compare to the king. The best toy in this video, probably the best fast food toy ever created. Super Mario Advance, a full-fledged board game based off of the Game Boy Advance remake of Super Mario Bros. 2. I don't know how you even reach the idea of giving away a board game alongside your chicken nuggets, but by god, back in 2002, Wendy's did. Don't get me wrong, the pieces are all little cardboard circles and squares, and there's almost no complexity, but I just don't care in the slightest. I mean, it's a kid's meal board game. All you do is draw a little card cardboard piece that'll tell you how many spaces to move and race to the end. They even included six playable characters, and one of them is Wart! I can't believe that you can only play as Wart in one game, and it's the f***ing Mario Advance Kids Meal board game. But, I'm afraid I have lied to you. You should have seen the look on your face. This is not a full-fledged board game as a Kids Meal toy. It's two full-fledged board games as a kid's meal toy. As if it wasn't already the best thing in this video, it's now the best twice over because you can flip the board over and play a second one. The same goes for the pieces, though Wart is tragically turned into Bowser if you do so. The Super Circuit board has less movement changing spaces in total, but it also has a shortcut that lets you skip five spaces ahead, which I can appreciate for a Mario Kart themed game. Even ignoring the board game entirely, I get a big goofy smile out of just owning all these little pieces with Mario characters and Mario items on them, as well as is the fact that the game box mimics that of the actual game it's based on. It's extremely easy to argue that I'm way too invested in all this stuff in this video, and you're right, I totally am, but these dumb little novelty items hold a really special place in my heart, and it bums me out a bit that future kids will probably never enjoy them in the way I did growing up. As weird as it is to say, these toys, alongside those old N64 kiosks, make fast food chains a somewhat important part of how I grew to love video games like I do today. Needless to say, I think they really were better back in my day. But Arby's, if you have any extra Amy feet just lying around,